नमस्कार आय एम गौतम चिकरमने वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एट ऑब्जर्वर रिसर्च फाउंडेशन हेलो एवरी वन माई नेम इज अफ्रम एंड आई एम द को फाउंडर सी ई ऑफ कू एंड टूडे वी गोन बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एवरी थिंग दैट बॉदर्स एस अबाउट सोशल मीडिया एंड हाउ वी आर गोन गो अबाउट सॉल्विंग इट गौतम वॉट बॉदर्स यू अबाउट सोशल मीडिया दीज डेज ओके द फर्स्ट थिंग is you know i i would have started with consumers my experiences or what i see around me but after ukraine those are those have become very small problems mm. until yesterday they were very big problems mm. for instance the uh, elimination of trump mm. from mm. twitter or the fact that many other people are being cancelled left right right and center yeah. the fact that we are having several other debates on uh, what is censorship who uh, and what is the adjudicating mechanism in order mm, to fix mm. suppose you have a problem so those are yesterday's problems mm, mm. today's problems the way i see them is that entire nations are getting cancelled mm. uh, we saw how uh, last few months how between russia and ukraine overnight russia has been cancelled it has been cancelled financially it has been cancelled on the trade front it has been cancelled very close to diplomatically although not completely but most important the conversations have cancelled so the news that i get today hmm. is all through the filter of the western media it's one side i'm not saying that i'm not justifying either of the two that hmm. uh, uh, who is at blame that's a separate debate and not that is not what is bothering at a conceptual level if the global tech is actually a local tech masquerading as a global tech hmm. and is vulnerable to the domestic politics but having this large footprint large span mm, across mm, the world mm, where mm. you think twitter is my for instance for me twitter is uh, is a very important part of my work mm. of my conversations now tomorrow if overnight india gets cancelled mm. for whatever reason it is completely not acceptable to me mm, mm. and as a result i believe companies like your school which are creating alternative platforms which are coming up slowly or perhaps not Uh, 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 technologically maybe a couple of generations here and there mm. are they they have a very important strategic value yeah which is that the conversations that we have are not dependent upon us Somebody legislations else. or us government or some foreign government so Correct. on the one hand that is the problem on the other hand there is a country like china which is the next model which can infiltrate because of our democracies into mm. our platforms talk mm. to us mm. influence us but there is a big great red wall that we cannot enter china mm. so there is no conversation mm. they are influencing us like a psychop like a like a strategic uh, they have weaponized their uh, our systems correct against ourselves correct and that's where companies like you so this is the most important thing that's bothering me and i think we need to find a, an answer yeah. very fast so gautam uh, you know i was i was making some notes and i saw that you know there are more countries which have nuclear power and there are more countries which have space programs than there are countries which have their own social media like the only two countries which have given social which have social media and are being used by other countries are us and china and for china it's only tiktok right us has all of the other social media platforms and without actually waging war you can you know the kind of power that the soft power that technology has especially social media you can actually make a country fight within itself and take advantage of it so do you think that kind of a power is actually good with one country do you think they are being neutral at all uh do you think you know is there a solution to move them towards neutrality like for example you know when when i am building ku the biggest challenge that we have is for the english audience of india to realize why they should use ku because you know most of the english speaking audience of india actually without knowing has been colonized in their mind and they don't want to talk to the rest of india in their language so ku is all about inclusiveness right we want to include people uh, who are talking kannada hindi tamil telugu to the english speaking thought leaders and that is why we exist 
and that is right. your translator uh, correct function. translating for things. instance you can i can write a tweet uh, sorry uh, write a, a coup in uh, tamil yeah tell me to translate into english and it becomes english as correct well. so correct i get extremely local ideas local thoughts yes. in a diverse Back language to you. otherwise you are in a bubble of english speaking india which is talking to itself and hoping that the rest of the world listens but so i think this is a great innovation yeah. and uh, I, I sincerely hope this gathers momentum. So, as we are talking and, uh, and what you were saying, I, I think so. On the one hand, you have American tech or Western tech. On the other, you have Chinese walls hmm. and Chinese tech. Perhaps the solution is India tech, and hmm. it need not necessarily be India tech for India only. Yeah, I think the way our expansive civilization. Hmm. has been over the past i think india tech can be an alternative to the whole world's tech yes. we only need scale we perhaps need some money little bit of technology but i think uh, companies like yours are already on, on the course and hmm. uh, just like uh, our uh, payments technologies yeah. i think it can be one of our greatest exports Absolutely. to the world particularly yeah. the uh, global south uh, likewise if our platform gathers momentum uh, gains traction uh, 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 reaches a, 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 a particular kind of uh, scale, uh, then I think not only the conversations that you are talking about, mm. which is P to P, but I think the more important conversation is G to P, mm. government to people. Mm. So many mm. policies are brought out every day, yeah. uh, they are put out on uh, social, on Twitter, here and there. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. And uh, suppose for some reason there is a problem uh, that India has with uh, the US on, on maybe on trade or climate change. You you cannot just dis uh, overnight not have Twitter and keep then hunting for uh, mm, technology. Mm, so mm. I think we need to have platforms uh, yeah. that where uh, that enable uh, G to P G to uh, C uh, government to citizen conversations. Uh, some of them could be like uh, yours for conversation. Some of them could be uh, government owned. Uh, uh, like for instance, uh, websites etc. Mm. But the whole communication, I think. Uh, India uh, and companies like yours and I hope more companies like yours hmm. flourish hmm. Uh, uh, can be the mediators of a future uh, yeah. that is almost at our doorstep today yeah. Uh, yeah. in terms of offering platforms without the platforms getting political. Absolutely. So another thing that you know we think is the future is the fact that you know the whole globalization happened and hence technology was globalized but there will be a deglobalization as well, right? So every country, just like India wants to become Atmanirbhar digitally and otherwise, every other country is feeling that pain. But we are probably the only country which can develop our own technology. We like have the we, capability. Like, like we did for the vaccines, for instance. Correct. We, we were the only ones who could uh, produce vaccines apart from uh, the other uh, superpowers, right? Uh, so just like that, we are the only ones who can develop good global technology. And we should actually take, like for example, Ku, we should actually give it to other countries and say, if you want your own social media and your own definition of freedom of speech on in the digital world, then you should use Ku. So the current model where, uh, where something happens and the government says remove this or remove that yeah. or, a, or a consumer complains that this is abusive, etc, etc. You want to give that away and create um, uh, country specific possibilities or Correct. give countries of, uh, the flexibility to put their own uh, yeah. uh, possibilities there? So, for example, our community guidelines for India is very specific to India. It maps to the laws of land of the country. Now, when we go to Nigeria or Indonesia, if we go and force our laws on them, it will create offline disruption in the society. Right? So, we don't want to do that. We actually want to say, here's our community guidelines. Please modify this community guideline based on your country to reduce all friction for us to enter. And we'll have a local team, local office, right? We'll even set up in a way that a local businessman can actually invest in the local entity and they can run it as a parallel social media entity to the global social media entity so that they always have an option. And this will always have a different flavor because what we built Ku as is an inclusive social media app. It's not just for the English. So, so yeah. the related issue then that you might face and therefore perhaps we need a solution for or at least uh, know what we are getting into is 
is ku a not for profit a social good is it a public good or is it a private enterprise uh, that has stakeholders that could get listed tomorrow it could be a unicorn or multiple unicorn tomorrow etc the moment there is a a company business that mm, comes mm, into it mm. how do you then just give it away to nigeria or to indonesia yeah. uh, to do what they want to do what is the, what uh, have you thought this through yeah so as in we we've also started disrupting in the monetization side as well so what global tech does or global social media does is it takes time and attention investment from a user it takes creations as an investment investment from the creator it takes this and sells it to an advertiser or a brand and makes all the money but nothing is given back to the people who have invested into it in the first place so what we have done is actually we've opened this tab we've said mr user or miss user you have invested your time and attention i have been able to make money from an advertiser here's i made 100 rupees here's 5 rupees for your time and attention so we are actually sharing back to a user is that happening are yeah, you yeah we already started paying cash to people not cash as in we de- developed our own economy where we are giving out uh you know what we call ku coins and those coins can be used to pay a creator also from the user so the creator is also happy so a successful glo- as in uh social media is the one that is most aligned in terms of everybody's success so there are four stakeholders in any social media app right there is the platform itself there is the user who consumes there is the creator who creates and there is an advertiser who wants to uh, come and show their ads all four should be happy today's model keeps only two people happy which is the platform and the advertiser monetarily right everybody else has to figure out their own money otherwise so we are disrupting it by making sure that all four so let me interrupt so now uh, then you are talking what you are talking about a ku coin is like a bitcoin i think it's not it's not web3 it's not listed what is it then how do i transact it, it is a loyalty program that is basically what it. do i get in return for uh, my loyalty so you will get coins you will be able to take that out as money at a certain ratio but that is a loyalty program it's like you know jet used to have these jet miles okay you're booking more and more jet and hence you'll get miles you'll get a free ticket once in a while right just like that you use more and more of ku so i think this is a great experiment where uh, the the like, where all stakeholders get together Correct. and therefore it becomes a public good while being private in its uh, uh, constitution so uh, absolutely so nigeria will will develop its own system where their advertisers ku nigeria who owns the ip suppose it goes to nigeria so we will always hold a stake in it but there will be investment in locally there will be an entity locally there will be an office locally there will be employees locally who will develop it so this model seems to me once it scales up it looks as though it can challenge global yes. tech uh, on their own um, uh, terrain and uh, offer this new solution now this solution is a great solution it it is very easily copied hmm. so twitter tomorrow may want to copy it uh, how do uh, or is it the first mover is going to help uh, to move no, so as in legacy social media will always have a problem giving away whatever they are already earning we as a new entrant can introduce the model and hence grow with it because today the short term loss of any global social media starting to distribute its earnings a part of its earnings will have to go to the user and creator why will they lose money today they are under pre- public market pressure to keep growing right so i think it's a brilliant opportunity okay, for so us okay so now uh, how does uh, this third uh, th- the third kind of so there is uh, western tech there is china tech china russia one yeah. western one and there is india tech. india tech now how does india tech uh, take care of its uh, free speech uh, uh, censorship uh, cancellation uh, are there new policies there how do you ensure that there is no um, abuse and this is what will be finally what began the whole uh, dissonance mm. in social media was some people began to abuse uh, some people began to uh, uh, you know uh, harass women mm-hmm. uh, users 
uh, then it became political political then it fell into uh, regressive territory yeah, yeah, yeah. and so on so there was a downward spiral i think the challenge here is that uh, how free do we want free speech to be hmm. Uh, hmm. Uh, as samir saran uh, of orf uh, once said that you know we have free speech uh, but that doesn't mean that i can go uh, uh, to in, in front of your house and start uh, screaming shouting Mm. and ab abusing you that yeah, that is not yeah, free speech yeah, yeah. correct so how free should free speech be i i think that itself becomes uh, a, a, an issue that companies like yours would need to uh, yeah. negotiate uh, think through uh, uh, such that uh, you are not seen to be censoring but you are trying to fix the problem have you given this yeah. any thought so i think anonymity is a big issue right uh, the more bots on a platform the more automated your system seems uh, while we will move towards you know automation of real people right uh, any bots any trolling that happens is usually you know if you if you opened up for bots that's what happens right in our case we, we are actually taking two three fundamental steps one 98% of our users all log in through a phone number not email so legacy systems are all email driven the new systems are all phone number driven with an otp so you broadly like made sure uh, the real, the person yeah, is real the risk gets reduced because cha changing sim cards is much maybe 5000 people would be able to do but when you are talking about millions emails, billions of people correct. clearly uh, the, the the scale definitely reduces although it, it need not always end yeah and what we've also done is we've taken the uh, authentication of real people to the next level on coup we're the first social media across the world to say you self verify yourself as a real person so one is the phone number otp second level is you can actually go and self verify yourself with a green tick our eminence verification is a yellow tick Self verification as a real person is a green tick where you will enter an Aadhaar number, your Aadhaar number, you will get an OTP and once you enter that OTP, you will get a green tick, which means that your whatever you say on coup gets a lot more weightage naturally because you have authenticated yourself as a real person. And as soon as you authenticate yourself as a real person, the abusive nature of that handle reduces. You will have more sane conversations like you would do in the offline world like in in a hall full of people you will not say whatever you want because you everybody knows who you are and they can take you to task similarly but then that yeah. would uh, as the argument goes and i have not really made up my mind uh, on which side of the debate i am but hmm. the debate definitely exists which is that i am a harassed entity hmm. afraid to reveal myself Hmm. But I wish to be to point out to some wrongdoing, let us say, yeah. by a company, by the yeah, government, yeah, yeah. by the municipal authority, by the local uh, uh, water, uh, yeah. water, electricity. These are the problems of governance. Now, if I were to bring my name out in public, I might become vulnerable to the powerful people. Hence, hmm. anonymity hmm. has a place. Hmm. On the other hand, anonymity to uh, being used politically or to abuse or to push a narrative mm, mm, is mm. the is the downside that yeah. that we see and now balancing the two i think is going to be crucial uh, i haven't yet dis uh, no i haven't yet thought about it mm. but i think this is going to be one of the big challenges that companies like yours yeah, would absolutely. be facing so i think we we want we want to keep the user at the center of everything like whether it is the platform ourselves government advertiser or the creator everybody wants the user if the user is happy and knows that the platform is transparent, consistent in its behavior, not having its own filter of what's right and wrong, finally that is what wins trust for a platform. So I think our philosophy is to keep moving in that direction and keep solving situations that come into us. It's an important life. point that you raise because uh, Twitter wants the privileges of a platform hmm. but wants to behave like a media. Correct. If, if you want to edit, if you want to cancel, if you want to re remove, etc., those are editorial privileges, hmm. not platform privileges. Correct. If you are a platform, everybody is equal, etc. Now, in that equality comes abuse. Yeah, correct. Uh, and then who is to uh, 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 adjudicate abuse? Yeah. And yeah. These, uh, fake news. Correct. Uh, fake data. Uh, hmm. how, how does one 
uh, adjudicate that. So, are you are, are the future platforms going to be vulnerable to what the government says? Sometimes the government could be manipulative. Mm. The state government may say something. The union government might mm. disagree. Mm. So I think you are headed no, for so a big, uh, <laughs> big squeeze. No. So the so for example, fake news you brought up. So we're working on a feature where any user on Ku, if they feel that a particular post is something that they want to check whether it's true or false, right? Today the platform is taking ownership. Like Global Tech is taking ownership of labeling it you know, uh, true or false. What we are doing is giving every user the power to go and fact check it themselves. And when you, so you will click on the options on a coup, you will say fact check, you will get a list of fact checkers. Some paid, some free and the user chooses which fact checker they want to check, take. Some hundred users will ch uh, uh, choose a particular paid service. Uh, another 100 users will use a free service. Now our job is to show the result of a mix of all of that. Saying this has been fact checked. Say 75% of the fact checkers believe this to be true. True. Only 25% believe it to be fake. Fake. And give the whole list of people who think it's fake and who, who think it's uh, true. Now the more you keep democratizing everything that you think is going to be pinned against the platform as a judgment. So don't judge, you keep democratizing all these things. The more you are moving towards a self-sustaining platform rather than you taking all the ownership for it. And for that, you have to let go of control. Naturally, see, I am letting go of control. I don't want to hold that power of saying what is true and what is false. And I am very clear about it as the CEO. So hence, we will develop all these. But if you don't have that fundamentally, if you want to control, then you won't give, produce all of these uh, features. Interesting times ahead. <laughs> so for the citizen, for the nation, and now at a geopolitical level, uh, yeah. I think social medias as part, some are weaponizing it through psych operations, psych wars, others are using it for governance <laughs> and, and so on. Uh, I think despite so many years, more than a decade of social media, almost two decades, yeah. I think we are still at the beginning. We are still at the beginning. <laughs> we are back to zero. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is a, there is a huge space for uh, you know new thinking into social media. We don't have to be in the legacy. Uh, also, the, the the very fact that the whole world is looking at it, like you know, we uh, we were in UK, and even ministers in UK would want their own social media. The feeling is the same across. So I think we we've, we we have a great. Uh, opportunity to actually develop Indian tech. So let's say we develop 100 apps, let five of them become international, right? And we take these aspects, new kind of thinking where we don't want to control you, where you can control yourself. And plus the cultural diversity that Correct. comes naturally and in And make India. inclusive technology because we are, we are the most, uh, you know, diverse country in the one of the most diverse countries in the world if we develop a technology that unites such diversity then it can uh, unite the diversity of the world as well so i think it's a great opportunity for technology builders in india uh, not just social media but all kinds of technology and uh, you know the, the decade is up and uh, you know it's a, it's up, up to us to take advantage of it i look forward to it great talking to you thanks a lot gautam